Welcome to The Lounge with Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. And I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest today is Brandon Foster, who is a mindset expert for careers on vacation, but also owner of Magic Lamp Vacation. So welcome to The Lounge, Brandon. We're so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here, Stephanie. I can't wait to talk. I know. This is going to be awesome. So if any of you are familiar, we've had Brandon on um, on webinars before. We just had to have him back. And perfect timing because right now is such a crazy, I mean, it's been a crazy time for like two years, but really the pivot is there's always pivots happening. And right now, especially we're coming into a new year, you know, it's the travel is so pent up. It's already, I, I've heard so many people already getting super busy, but there's also a lot of setbacks still happening and mindset and motivation is so, so important. So I'm really excited to ask you, just pick your brain like crazy today during this episode and ask you questions. But before I do that though, can you just explain how did you become a mindset expert coach and how'd you get into industry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so um, I actually started my own travel business when uh, my husband and I were both getting laid off at the same time. So not, not exactly, you know, a best case scenario for anybody. Um, but sometimes during those moments where you're like, why is this happening to me? It actually turns out to be the best thing to happen for you. So that's how I kind of got into the travel business. Um, on a personal note, the reason why I started my travel business with my niche was originally specifically Disney and Universal was because when I was coming out, Disney and Universal brought so much joy to myself when I was really, really depressed. And then um, I met Cindy through Careers on Vacation and um, I've always been someone big on education and specifically on mindset. That's just a huge part of me and my being. Um, <clears throat> and she, their mindset expert was leaving and she thought it was a really good fit. And so I, I went into that role and uh, that role has started to um, really it turned into my, I have my own mindset coaching business now because of that and how that's just kind of ballooned up. So um, I would say that I, do, I love mindset because Stephanie, this is what mindset is. People are like, what the heck is mindset? Mindset is deciding to actually choose the thoughts you think about yourself and your business. And when you think differently, you're willing to do things you haven't done before. And when you're willing to do things you haven't done before, you get results you've never gotten before, which is what we're all after, right? We want, we want massive wave seasons coming up, right, Boo? So we want, we want massive waves. We don't want those small dinky, inky waves. We want massive waves for wave season. So that's why I love what I do so much. That's awesome. And shout out, Cindy is so cool. We love it. And we're so thankful because Cindy brought you to us pretty much. So she you. did. Cindy is the <laughs> yeah. best thing. Cindy, you know, I love you, boo. We just, we just had a huge retreat in November, which was super fun. So that's so awesome. That's really cool. And I've always so much believed that. I think that's why we just love chatting because we're very similar that it's so important to, you know, got to stay, got to stay positive, but you got to keep that mindset. It's all about the mindset. It's not easy. If it's so easy, everybody would be like extremely successful and, you know, doing really well, but it's really, it's, it's, you have to practice it and learn it. So that's why I am going to pick your brain here today. So <laughs> I basically have a bunch of different questions and we'll see how many we get through here. Well, we're going to try to get through the, them all, um, but I know that they're going to be uh, different, different uh, topics, sides, but all having to do with one thing, which is mindset. Absolutely. So are you ready? Are you ready for these questions? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. This is probably the most important one and the biggest one is how do you stay motivated when it looks like you're not getting results? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that is, that's really, really huge. Especially it doesn't matter what season you are in as a travel agent, right? You can be like on the top of your game for like a really long time. And then all of a sudden start to see like a dip in your sales. Or if you're a new, newer agent, everybody knows it's all about the leads, right? We want more leads, more leads, more leads. And you could be doing all this action and you're like, I don't get the results. Like if you start to get frustrated. So the, the biggest key that I have to say is that people forget that there is a gestation period between the action you're taking your business and the time you actually see the results, right? 
So I always tell, especially new travel professionals or even ones that feel like they're in a little bit of a slump, remember that today is a result of past actions, past thoughts, and past attitude. Past actions, past thoughts, past attitude is where you are today. So uh, now if you want to create new results in the future, that's the thoughts you have today. Those are the actions you take today. That's the attitude that you have today. So the biggest thing I have to say is when it looks like it's not working, it is working and don't stop because that is the time when people stop is right before it gets really, really, really amazing and really good. And people are starting to see a little bit of that right now coming into this wave season. But I honestly don't think travel has any idea how crazy and amazing this is going to be, especially for those who were marketing, even during COVID when there wasn't any travel happening that, that kept the marketing machines up and running, who were like going out and, and making people know that they exist, basically, like they're going to see some really crazy results. So whenever people get defeated about where you are today, remember that's today is results from the past. And what you decide to do and think today will bring your future. So. I love that. And so kind of on that, I have um, another question too is what would you say when, you know, we all have those little lulls or just even an off day, you know, the day that it's just hard to find the motivation. What would you say? Are there any tricks like that you do personally that just try to get yourself motivated when you're just having a day, you know, you get a couple clients one after another and you're just like, oh my gosh. I yes. Need Yes, I cry and eat lots of ice cream. No. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no. Um, look, we're all human, boo. Like we all have those days where we're like, I'm not feeling it. And here's the thing. A lot of people try when they when they're not feeling good or they're not in a good mood and they think that they're doing something bad or they're doing something wrong and you're not. Like every emotion is valid. But here's the key. You don't want to ignore why you're feeling bad. You don't want to ignore those low vibrational emotions of anger or bitterness or frustration or spite or whatever it is. You actually want to fully and completely embrace it. You got to feel to heal. And a lot of people don't do that. Instead, they don't want to feel bad. So they depress and repress those emotions. That turns into disease and anxiety in your body. And you don't want to do that. The quickest way through that is to feel it. So if you do feel like crying, cry. If you're angry, I was like, I was just watching a YouTube video earlier today of one of those smash centers where you go and you can like smash things like, uh, in a safe environments. Um, but you got to let those emotions be felt because that will allow you to come back to center, which is feeling joy, happiness. Now there's a couple of different tricks that I have for this. One is to like, really ask myself, what am I really upset about? Because generally speaking, what I think I'm upset about is not really what, I, what I'm upset about. Usually it's something deeper. Um, and then I ask myself, like, what feels good to me to do right now? Like, what do I want to do? Like, sometimes you got to take a step away from business and go binge watch something on Netflix, go get a Dairy Queen Blizzard. Everybody that knows me from careers on vacation knows it's like my go-to celebration is like Dairy Queen Blizzard. No affiliation. Um, but, uh, do something that brings you back to your joy and your happiness. I have the cutest cat, Frank, and he's a little bit of a chunky monkey, but he will always also bring you back to center. And when you come back to center and you're feeling that joy, um, then's the time to go back into your business because you never want to create anything in your business from a place of frustration, anger, bitterness, or resentment, because when you create from that place, your results are going to show from that place. You don't want to do that. I like that. Feel to heal. That's yes, a good quote. Feel to heal. <laughs> Love that. It's perfect. No, that's, that's really good because that's, I mean, that's, we're just human. So that's, that's really great, great tips. I think that we all, especially in the holiday season, it gets kind of crazy. And especially with just travel, it's just madness, but good, good problems to have. So good tips there. I like those. So kind of moving into a different angle here is, um, how do you know what you should charge for fees? Now I'm bringing this up because I know we were talking about mindset stuff, but you also have um, a very, I just really like your ideas on fees. And, and that's like also one of the most 
um, popular things to talk about also within the travel industry. So I just want to go there really quick. So what would you say to that question is how do you know what you should charge for fees? Yeah. So I would say first thing is don't charge based on what other people are charging. That is like the biggest way to, to not charge the right fee because a fee needs to be in alignment with your own heart. Okay. And that's really, really important. So if you don't charge enough for your service and you don't feel valued by your clients, you're going to be bitter, angry, and resentful when you go to help them. And you're not going to show up the way that you want to actually show up for your clients. And if you overcharge your clients with your fees, okay, where you're like, my value is not good enough. Like I'm taking advantage of them. Like I'm not giving them the service for what they paid me for. Now your client is going to feel that from you. So they're going to feel had, and they're going to feel taken advantage of. So you don't want either one of those scenarios. So what you have to do is you have to ask yourself, what would feel good to me? Like, what do I actually want for my fee? Once you know what you actually want, you got to ask yourself, what service would feel good to provide for that? Because money is just exchange, right? Money is the value of the service that you provide. So you could have someone that charges you know, $125 for a, a planning fee versus someone who, I think someone had charged like $5,000. It was like a viral news thing. It was like their, their fee to work with them was $5,000 and they had a waiting list, right? But in order to charge that $5,000, you have to know your value and your worth is that much. You have to be at the top of your game and that niche. You have to have years of experience because if you don't and you don't feel comfortable charging that, people won't pay it. So it's really, people forget that there's an energy dynamic at play when it comes to charging fees, right? And the idea that um, you can't charge for your services is a lie. <laughs> it's just a limiting idea entertained, as Jim Quick would say. Um, it's just a false belief in the travel industry. There are clients at every single price point you could possibly imagine. And it's up to you to figure out a price point that feels good to you, feels good to the clients you wanna serve and is in alignment with the service that you provide. Yeah, that's a good point too, to just make it, you know, you're helping yourself and your customers by having a fee because you're so right that, you know, you'll feel more likely and happy to help go extra mile and all that. It's just- Absolutely. Sense. Imagine if your affirmation was, my clients value my time and service are an excited and willing to pay my fees. People love to pay me because they love me and what I do for them. Like that's the, that's the energy you need to have behind that. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, actually on that one, we had a question about affirmation. So I think this, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it out there now because you brought up affirmations and what would you say to someone who doesn't believe that affirmations or positive thinking has an impact on results? So take this one, for example. Yeah. So if, so if you're new to mindset, uh, all, all the gurus, uh, myself included, we always say like, you need to choose an affirmation, which is just a positive thought. And you say that to yourself over and over again, because as you affirm something, you begin to integrate that belief system into the way you uh, show up and uh, the way that uh, law of attraction and all that, what you magnetize to yourself, right? But here's the thing, people will do their affirmations for like 10 minutes in the morning or 10 minutes a night, or they'll stay like they're 10 in the morning and 10 at night. And then the other 23 hours of the day, Stephanie, they are affirming, because affirming really, people think affirmation is always affirming a positive thought. An affirmation is just telling yourself the same story over and over again. So whether you're affirming a positive thought or a negative thought, boo, you're affirming things all the live long day. So if you are affirming negative things for you 23 hours in a day and you have your 10 affirmations in the morning and 10 affirmations at night, you're not going to see a whole lot of change in your life because you're spending 23 hours of affirming negative things for your life. So to the person who says, I don't think it works, you know, I tried it. Um, my question to you would be, what are you affirming the other 23 hours of the day? <laughs> yeah, 
Oh, for sure. And what are some um, ways that people, so if anybody's new to kind of like doing um, affirmations and just really making sure that their, their head is in the right space, like, do you like to do journaling in the morning or do you have like a post it up or like, what are some of your favorite ways to just remind yourself ever, like throughout the day? Yeah. So I, there's a couple different ways you can do it. So one is I love mirror work. So mirror work is when you affirm who you are in the mirror. Um, and there's, this is crazy, Stephanie, because I was listening to a podcast that had a Mel Robbins in it and they did a study. 75% of women cannot look at themselves in the eyes in the mirror because they don't love themselves. 75% that blew my mind. And I think for, for people in general or men, I think it was 55 or 60%. So, um, but that, that blew my mind. So mirror work is when you say your affirmations to yourself in the mirror, um, and I love to do, um, uh, the, the, I like to do the in three. So I like to say what I'm proud of. Uh, I like to tell myself what I forgive myself for. Cause we always forgive other people. We don't forgive ourselves. Right. And we're human. So what are you proud of? What do you forgive yourself for? And then what do you commit to yourself to do? Um, those are the, th the three things that I really like to say. And then, uh, Mel Robbins suggests giving like a high five. So like a high five in the mirror is always helpful. Journaling is really more helpful, Stephanie, for identifying what needs to be shifting, right? So mirror work is really good when you know what you're affirming and what you're integrating. Journaling is really helpful when you ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want to change in my life? And once you identify what you want, you ask yourself, what do I believe? A belief is just a pattern of thought you choose to think over and over again. So what do I believe? about this area of my life that I keep telling myself over and over again. So you're identifying it. And then you decide what that new thought is going to be to replace it. Okay. And so that's where journaling work really, really helps. Now the thing where people mess up is they go, well, I don't like my finances. And then they like, my affirmation is going to be, I'm going to be a billionaire by next Tuesday. And it's like, boo, you went way too far away. Like that is so far from your current reality it's hard for you to believe it when you say it. And it needs to be something that you believe when you say it. So in order for it to, to be something you believe, you kind of have to know where you're starting. So, you know, uh, for finances, if, if it's someone who wants, let's say it's someone who wants more leads, right? Even though I'm not getting the leads that I like to see, I know every day I'm getting closer to the amount I want to see, right? That, that small shift of even though I don't see it today, I know I'm getting closer every day really helps them. And then when they get further along, then they can say, I get more leads than I expect every day. Right. So it's just the needle mover affirmations are really, really helpful. So journaling and that, and then you can also take your favorite affirmations and either put them in an app that pops up on your phone as like a reminder. That's really helpful. And I also have a little note card that I keep in my pocket for like my super powerful ones that I'm really integrating at the time. That's awesome. Oh, I should, I should have thought like an app. There's an app for everything. So that's, yeah. <laughs> yes, there is. that is like the easiest thing to do is literally just put it on there. Cause you know, you'll be checking it and it's just, yeah, like, that's what we need. Hey, moment. that's what you guys need to add to Travify. You need a little affirmation that pops up for, for the, the clients that says yeah. my vacation is the best vacation ever. And I love my travel professional. Right? Yeah. You have like, have that affirmation for them in the app. I love that. It's like 9am time to do your mirror work and say, how much you love this vacation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, perfect. Oh, no, those are so awesome. I, I love those ideas. Super cool. Okay, so another question here for you is, um, someone asked, why do people who do the exact same thing sometimes get completely different results? Ooh, that's a big question. That is a big question. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> question. Why do people who do the same thing sometimes get different results? So I would say a couple of things. I would say, first of all, um, you, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but people know about law of attraction. There's actually 12 laws in the universe. And so people forget about the law of cause and effect. So a lot of it has to do with your attitude, your intentions and how you're feeling when you start to do the task. Um, because that's, those are going to be the seeds for the results that you receive. The other thing I would say too is, are you doing something because someone else did it or are you doing it because that's where your heart is guiding you and telling you what you 
should be doing, right? Because a lot of times people say, well, I did this and you should do the same thing, but we don't all serve the same clients. We don't all have the same niche markets and our personalities are all different. And one thing that I love about trusting your heart is your heart's always going to steer you on what's the most aligned way for you to show up to attract your ideal clients. So if I have someone who really loves, you know, Instagram and someone else really loves Facebook and Instagram person, she's a Facebook person doing really, really well. And they go, well, I'm going to do what they did because it's working well from on Facebook, but they hate Facebook. They're not going to get very good results because they're creating from a place of hate going on a platform that they, they don't like, and they don't want to do anyway. The only reason why they're doing it is because they think they have to do it. So I would say the reason why results work for some people, not others is because they're not in alignment. They're doing it because they think they have to, or they should do it. Not because they want to do it. Not because it feels good. Not because it's the most authentic way for them to show up. That's perfect. And it's really just coming down to also like finding your passion too. And you know, and what, what drives you kind of, you know, absolutely. Passion, like passion is the fuel from your heart and your soul, not your brain. <laughs> your brain always wants to keep you safe. Okay. Your brain doesn't want you to get your feelings hurt. Your brain does not want you to um, hurt financially. Your brain will always try to keep you safe. That's why your amygdala, your flight or fight response is in your brain. But your heart is given from the divine. Those are where your desires are. That's your passion. This is your giving. You know, all that is from your heart. Your heart will never lie. Your heart will always steer you in the right direction. Man, so many one-liners and quotes from this, this episode <laughs> coming out of this. So good. And so I have, I have one more question to round us out here. It's a really good one. Um, because we are going into a brand new year, which is super exciting. But, but, you know, we still have a pandemic. But travel's still picking up. And it's going to be really crazy where we know it will be. So how can travel agents overcome their fears of doing something new on their travel uh, business to up level in 2022? Because I know a lot of advisors are feeling excited, but having that fear as well, too. <clears throat> yeah. So that's an interesting question, because anytime that we have unexpected things happen in our life that we don't anticipate and we don't enjoy, like COVID, <laughs> <laughs> like, but there's no way for like that was not a good. That's not a good thing for travel, right? We can be honest and say that that was that was you know not a good thing to go through. However, so many good things are gonna come out of this, like a re a, a re acknowledgement of how valuable travel agents are, right? A new appreciation for the travel industry in general. Like any anything that is poo poo can be turned into gold, right? So. In terms of overcoming fear, you have to remember that fear is just exists to keep us safe. Fear is always focusing on a negative what if scenario. And a what if scenario has not happened yet. So that means you have the choice to always focus on a positive what if scenario, which is faith. Fear and faith are the exact same thing. The difference is, is it is a negative what if or a positive what if? And so my thing for all of you would be, you know, you have to do something different. If you want different results in your business, you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. So take away the lay of the labels that if it doesn't work out exactly how you thought it would, that it's a failure or it's a mistake. No, you're learning and you will get there. And remember to always focus on faith, the positive what if scenario. I love that. So perfect. It's such a great way to just think, you know, round up the year, get ready for the new one. So, so good. But okay, before we go though, we are going to do something really fun. We like to do rapid fire questions. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Okay. Yes. I didn't tell you ahead of time. So I like, get so much fun. <laughs> so I have, I only have four of them for you, but um, they're all, all pretty much travel related. One of them could be, I feel like you go a little different, but um, but they're really fun. So if you need to pass on any, let me know. But I feel like you'll probably be, you'll think of something quick on these. So, okay. <laughs> so are you ready? Here yeah. we go. Okay. First one is, is what is your favorite destination you visited? Oh, my favorite destination I've ever visited. Uh, have to be Disney World when I was a kid. Like my very first visit to Disney World, for sure. Hands down. I got in so much trouble because I got a sword from Pirates of the Caribbean and I literally got it taken away within five minutes because I was hitting oh. my sister with it. 
That's so funny. Oh my gosh, that's so good. And I'm actually going to just come up with a question here. What is your favorite Disney park? Oh, my favorite Disney park hand down is Tokyo Disney Sea. Ooh. Hands down. Tokyo Disney Sea, because it's the only theme park that Disney owns in the entire world. Actually, the only one I know of in the world where instead of having lands, it's seaports and the whole entire thing is surrounded by water. Wow. It's, it's amazing. That's really cool. Oh, that's so, that sounds awesome. Um, okay. So another one is what is the best meal you've ever had while traveling? Oh my gosh. The best meal I've ever had by traveling, man, I'm, I'm going to go with, um, uh, steakhouse 55, which is now closed. It was in the Disneyland resort hotel. Cause I did not have the best. I didn't have bad expectations for it, but I was like, it can't be, you know, like a really great steakhouse. If it's at Disney, even though I love Disney, it was amazing. It was so good. They had cream corn, which is like really big to me. And I'm a huge steak person because I'm originally from Texas. So yeah, Steakhouse 55. I'm oh, that's awesome. still a little bit bitter that it's closed. <laughs> yeah, shoot. Yep. That is that we're, I'm in Nebraska. So a lot of people would agree with you on that. Um, sounds like a, a very good meal um, there. And, it was. Uh, yeah. And cream corn. Oh, so good. Um, okay. So another one is what is the uh, last best or the best book or article that you've read lately. So it could be your favorite book ever, but just, or maybe something that you've read lately. Um, so the best book I've read lately is from Amanda Francis It's called rich as, um, F word. <laughs> oh, I have to like, like, be careful how I say that, but, um, she is a so-called money queen and a self-made multimillionaire and the way that she talks about the energy and frequency of money and earning, it really helped me to transform the way I viewed fees and travel. And um, it's a fantastic book. And she started from a very, uh, I don't want to say meager is not the right word, but a very um, small household where they struggled with money and everything else. And um, it's a fantastic book. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. And I'm making this question up as well, because um, I just feel like this would be a really good question for you in particular is what is, is there any podcast that you like listening to or anything um, that would help with like on this topic that you would recommend to people? Oh, yeah. But first, uh, but first the coffee, coffee wake up call is really, really great. Um, Kelly Grignon. Um, she's actually my coach. Um, so every mindset person, like, I, this is so crazy because I used to be, uh, very embarrassed that like a mindset expert would have their own coach. Right. But it's no different than an NFL football player having an amazing coach. So, um, she has a great podcast. I love Amanda Francis's podcast as well. Um, she has a really good one. Um, yeah, those would be my, those are my two, be my two podcasts, I think. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. And no, it makes total sense that you'd have a coach. I always think if people have um, like coaches, they're so cool. So really awesome. Well, like the it. way I look at it, Boo, is like, you know, <clears throat> if your mind, your mind is really the most important thing in your whole entire world, right? Because what you think determines the actions you take every day in your business, in your personal life, what you eat, like everything is reflected on your brain and what you're choosing to think about yourself. So um, get that part right and everything else starts to fall into place. Yeah, Heck yeah, <clears throat> perfect way to, to explain that. I love that. And thank you so much again, this is awesome. Now I just feel jazzed for life and everything. <laughs> so always so fun. I love, I love having you on for webinars and podcasts. It's so much fun. And yeah, and let's not wait so long next time. Let's do another I one. Know. Yeah, it was like over a year. We won't do that again. We'll make sure everyone listening will have Brandon on sooner because uh, we need we need this. We need this um, energy and excitement and the motivation. Pep talks, love it. Um, but but just want to thank um, everyone for tuning into this episode of the Lounge with Travify Academy. And thank you so much again to our special guest Brandon for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. And we hope you enjoyed our conversation today and join us again. But for now. Stay safe and we will catch you on the next.